What is up and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Anne Bolbrain and I make all sorts of videos about fashion, lifestyle, college, all that jazz. Basically, I just finished my first year as a freshman at the University of Delaware studying fashion design and product development. And I'm also receiving an associate's degree from FIT during my time here at college. And so I have a lot of things I know about fashion. I've experienced it all firsthand relatively recently. Basically, I completed all of my gen eds pretty much before coming to college. I did a lot of fashion classes last semester, so it wasn't like I was still doing gen eds and a little bit of fashion I was doing full-fledged fashion so I'm gonna be telling you all about it all the things you need to know before coming to fashion school in general or studying fashion I am a fashion design major but I think a lot of this also applies to people who are in merchandising or any other branch of fashion school because I think it all goes hand in hand so with that being said subscribe down below to see more videos about New York City college fashion all that jazz right into the video I have a handy dandy list of everything that you need to know again this is relative like this is in my experience personally with that being said the very first thing is knowing your designers and brands this should be like a duh you would think but there are so many of them it's kind of hard to grasp it all so like you may know like Gucci Chanel and all that sort of stuff but like you need to know a lot <laughs> they're gonna be like asking you questions or things like that like oh like what are your feelings about this designer or Jacques Mousse or like all these random designers you may have not heard of and they're gonna expect you to know them or if you don't know them immediately going home and studying up on those designers and brands because that is just very important if they're your inspiration they're the muse someone who's done it before you should be aware of the things within that field so number two is what jobs are in the industry. While you may not know exactly what you want to do, I know I want to do my own fashion company, have my own business and do that sort of stuff, but there's so much within fashion. So like in merchandising, there's buying, there's fashion illustration, fashion design, the actual product, like manager, the person who delegates the stuff. There's lots of tasks within fashion design and just saying you want to do fashion isn't really enough. So just being aware of all the different realms that you could possibly go into or study is just like really important. You need to know how to take criticism. So basically, I'm terrible at this, typically, or I used to be. I used to be pretty bad. Uh, I used to just like break down into tears like before I came to college, so thankfully we worked that out before. But there will be a lot of criticism in fashion classes, fashion design classes, where you're presenting for the class, and the teacher's giving you notes, other professors looking in are giving you notes, critics are coming in and giving you notes, your students, your fellows, your friends, all those people are going to be giving you corrections, notes, some may be like, that is the ugliest thing I've ever seen. And you have to be somehow able to take a straight face, use that information, and adjust your work. Because not everyone's going to like what you're doing, but you need to be able to take the criticism and not get upset about it. You need to stay calm and collected and move on and use it to better yourself. Which is really hard for a lot of people, so don't take that personally if you don't get that immediately. I mean, I guess it gets easier with time. My design classes, we have a critique at the end of every single class. You're getting plenty of practice in. Preparing to practice every single day. Every day. Your teachers will know if you're not practicing. This is illustration related. Not necessarily expecting you to get on the sewing machine and whip out a new shirt every day. But when you're sitting drawing, you need to have some sort of creative motion, inspiration, doing something with fashion every day. So whether that's studying a new brand, whether that's drawing, drawing's the big one, just getting those croquis over and over and over again. Your teacher's going to know who's putting in that extra effort, and so maybe you won't have homework like you do in high school and stuff like that, but you're going to be expected to be doing the extra work on the side without them necessarily telling you to do that. Know what it takes to be successful. Everyone in fashion wants it everyone wants it but who's working hard enough there are thousands and thousands of people competing for the same jobs for the same positions the same internships the same grades as you are and what is going to separate you from the rest it's a very 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 competitive field so how are you going to stand out from the crowd are you putting the work in because it is a field that if you're not putting the work in it is very hard to be successful in so know what you're getting yourself into when you're starting fashion design or fashion in general that you have to be able to put the career above certain things to kind of like fight to stay in it I guess if that makes sense that sounds really harsh it's really fun like but you do have to be willing to work for it six and seven are kind of like wrapped in one Adobe in general I wasn't great at it coming into college but I had used Adobe Illustrator before I had used Photoshop before and that makes things a lot easier for you your teachers are really gonna want you to come in with a high amount of skills and of course it'll help maybe teach you basics over again but it's not like 
for sure. Like you're not going to have a lot of time. Again, it's be something that they're going to expect you to practice on your own. So if you have Illustrator or Photoshop, please start working on it before you come to college. Or once you get to college, be continuing to practice it every day once your university provides it with you. Clothing is surprisingly not as important, like the clothing you're wearing, in class as you would think. I remember being so like nervous that I'd have to dress like I'm going to a New York Fashion Week show every single day for class so that I like stood out, I showed that I knew fashion. But after pretty much the first week, everyone is going through school in general and the weight of school itself and like having lots of homework, tests and finals and everyone isn't dressing for New York Fashion Week every time you walk into class. It is an added bonus. It's a really great plus if your teacher compliments your outfit, that's, no, that's when you know you're really making it, when your friends are complimenting your outfit. People in class, if you are dressing up, you are standing out in a way, but it isn't required. So don't feel like you should go in and get a new wardrobe before college because it's absolutely not necessary. Like some days I'll show up full dress, like full dressy glam. And then other days I'll show up in like sweat shorts and like a tube top and be like, oh, that's it. You need to make connections with absolutely everyone. So like I said, it is competitive. You are in your class and be like, wow, she is really good at what she does. She's really good and I feel like I should be competitive with her. I feel like I shouldn't like her because she's good. While in ways you do want to use the competitiveness to drive you, you do want to make connections with the people in your class. People in your class so you can get jobs at companies that could help you one day. Your professors know people, your colleagues, like everyone within your university field of fashion is a resource to you. So do not take those connections lightly and really make sure you harness each one of them and do the best that you can with it. Which brings me to number 10, LinkedIn. My very first class for fashion, which was intro to fashion business, made sure, like we had to create a LinkedIn profile and get it approved by our teacher so that we could have like people actively looking for us or seeing us when they're looking on UD pages or looking for interns or things like that. So if your school doesn't require you to do that, which a lot of them don't, I highly recommend before you go to college at least creating a profile and like start following your your school's pages. And with that being said, you don't be afraid to reach out to other people in those companies. So like I've gotten to talk to people that working at Ralph Lauren, Tommy Hilfiger, Chanel, Gucci, just by reaching out to them on LinkedIn. So don't be afraid to do that. Projects take literally hours. Literally hours. My final project for my fashion drawing class probably took me three consecutive days of me working 12 hours. I wish that was a joke. So I pretty much had the last week of class for that class to grind out work for the project, which you don't always get. And I worked my butt off the entire two hour class, entire two hour class. And then I spent pretty much all the finals week focusing on that rather than some of my actual written exams because of how much time the Adobe, the draw designs, the drawing, the photoshops, the presentation, because all of it is so critical. So don't underestimate how long fashion takes. I'm someone who goes fast with projects and it still takes me forever. Look out for that. That's not saying you can't do other fun things, but it does take a long time and you just be willing to put in the hours if you want it to be good. This is a kind of an odd one, but math and geometry. You're probably like, oh, I'm a fashion girl. I don't, I didn't need a high SAT maybe. You are gonna need good math, like algebra, geometry, because when you're making patterns, you're gonna need to do quick math on the spot. When you're designing or draping something, you have to figure out how much you're gonna need of all these fabrics when you're shopping at the fabric store. All these random things do require math, and the better you are at math, the quicker they will go by and the less time you're taking on these projects in general. You're gonna need to learn all sides of the fashion industry. When you go into the fashion industry, you think, oh, I'm just gonna be working in design. No. You're gonna have to know the creative direction side, the photography side, the runway coordinator side. There's so many like little things that you should at least dabble in for a minute. A lot of my classes did cover those, but I think it's also important to be willing to look into it yourself because nobody likes a designer or someone who, who isn't aware of the other things happening, like living in their own bubble when there are so many factors going into all the designs, the products, everything you're creating. Knowing the difference between a BSA, a BA, and a BFA, depending on what program you are, so you may be like, I'm going to fashion design, but you may not know what type of fashion design. So I'm a BSA, which is Bachelor's of Science and Arts, I'm pretty sure. I don't know, it's something with science. So basically my major required me to do chemistry, calculus, all these higher up maths and it focuses on textiles as well as fashion design. Bachelor's of Fine Arts focuses on a lot of art history classes and things like that along with fashion and Bachelor's of Arts is more just the fashion design itself. Depending on what program you're in depends on how much math and science you need, depends on what things you focus on. Number 15, the vocabulary of materials. Being able to say that this is a cotton weave or that this is a rayon 
or it's a synthetic material. You should be like learning those things. So whether you're just like looking on the back of tags, knowing the texture, going to a fabric shop and just feeling them out, that's a really great way to do it. Knowing a little bit so when the teacher asks you like what do you recommend doing this project in or you do a project with whatever you want, don't be the one who shows up and do does it in like a tool when it really should have been like a more of a satin or something like that. This should be a duh, you need to know how to sew. Typically if you're in fashion school already you will have already had to submit a portfolio of things you've sewn, things you've drawn, things like that so you should already know how to sew. And if your school for some reason is like will teach you once you get there. Them teaching you once they get there is this much of sewing versus how much they expect you to be able to know by the next class. So the difference of learning those basic skills and then moving it into creating full pieces and garments on your own, they're expecting you to have that knowledge immediately taken into your bank if this makes any sense. You just need to know how to sew. Do your research, do a little sewing before you get here. You need to pay attention and take notes. Everything stacks on top of everything all of it you have to be fully aware of or else it's gonna pile up and you're gonna have to go all the way back to the basics and it's impossible to backtrack that far so you're gonna need to take good notes pay attention in class you you really do need to be fully like zoned in and like knowing what you're doing and going over and practicing those techniques because it does get harder as you go especially for things like my fashion culture classes or fashion history the different decades of fashion take those notes and keep them number 18 <sighs> This is my biggest one. Everyone's gonna sit there and tell you you're doing an easy major and it is the most infuriating thing you'll ever do and I completely understand why it makes people so mad but from a fashion perspective it's not an easy major. A lot of people especially like on TikTok recently are like oh they're not really doing college like they're just privileged and not they're not doing actual work and in some degrees I can be like yeah people can see this privilege I sit and I draw for my class or that can be how it looks from the outside perspective. I make clothes for my classes while other people are doing like mathematic equations. But like I said, depending on the type of degree, like a bachelor's of science, you're doing the same math and science-y things as well, or you're just spending so many hours technical, technical criticism, and you're just receiving so many different like challenges along the way. So it's not easy. Like everyone says, you have to put in the work you have to be literally so driven, you have to retain all the information, you have to have techniques, and you're gonna be, it's one of the few majors where I feel like you're completely criticized, like I said in the last one. It's so competitive, and so like, while a STEM major or engineering is competitive, someone's not coming up to them and saying, I hate your work, or hitting things like self-esteem. So, I don't know, it's, it's, diff it's easy in different ways, but I think it's also just as challenging as other majors, so don't let that discourage you when people tell you that. It is super competitive. I have no mercy when I say that. <sighs> a lot of people, depending on where you're going to fashion school, in New York City, everyone says you're going to go in and you're going to know it's competitive. It's a very competitive school, especially FIT itself. But on the different end of like UD, I came to Delaware and they're like, we're not a competitive program. We believe in like really supporting your peers and creating connections, which I do believe that's true. But I think it's just the same as if you were in New York City. The people in your class, you are completely like judging in the nicest way possible. They can be your best friend, but you are judging them because you want your work to be the best. You want yours to stand out to the professor. You want to have the better grades. And it's competitive in that way because it's not like, like I said in engineering, if you're, you're doing a problem or you're solving something, if you get to the same answer, it's not going to really look too much different than the person next to you's. But the person next to you's drawings could be 10 times better than yours. And it's just like a mind thing. You just compare yourself to it. And it is competitive and you are fighting for positions, for winning titles, for scholarships, things like that because it's such a smaller community. And so it is competitive. I will be the first to say it. Just be, go in, be prepared for that. Don't let that defer you from going into fashion or making friends in your group. I think having friends who are good is the best thing that can happen for you because you'll keep pushing each other. Use that as a positive, not a negative. Follow illustrators and companies on Instagram. So before you go to school, just be like looking at people. Love, love, write, draw. I don't know. This is one illustrator who I love, highly recommend if you're into fashion following her account, just following big brands, companies you want to work with, just so that you are constantly intaking fashion when you're doing things like sitting on your phone or on TikTok and stuff, so that when you're talking in class, you're like, oh yeah, I saw Ralph Lauren put out a new line with this new biodegradable material. And just gives you talking points throughout the day. Start building your resume right away. People are going to be looking for <laughs> internships, jobs like i said since the fashion industry itself is so competitive you want to be one of those people 
who has an outstanding resume, portfolio, things like that. So immediately once I got to college, I joined Synergy, which is our fashion club. This year I'm going to be serving as vice president. I'm part of the runway for dreams that just started, and I want to get more involved with that because I actually really like that. Partially in the fashion merchandising club, and then the American Textiles, American Association of Textiles and Colorists. That is what I'm also a part of. I always volunteer for stuff within my department. Whenever an opportunity or internship comes up, I'm the first to raise my hand. I am the NRF ambassador for my school, so the National Retail Foundation. I have a lot that I'm doing related to fashion, plus my other outside activities, like gymna club gymnastics, and um, my camera cut out. I have clothes on. I didn't know if that was not communicated after looking back at the video, but I do have a tube top on. I'm not naked, YouTube, so... Basically what I was saying, I was doing club gymnastics and UD theater. I have other things in my resume, but fashion's obviously my main concern. This is easy, but just know your measurements. They're gonna expect you to know what you need to get for, like, patterns. Like, our first basic project was, like, creating a shirt. We needed a pattern. Just know your sizing. Be your professor's best friend. I have no shame in saying this. Make friends with your professor. Like, go to office hours, talk to them after class, ask questions if you have them. Just also tell them you're open to opportunities. Like, I told my teacher at the beginning, who was my intro to business teacher and my uh, professional seminar teacher, at the beginning that I really wanted to do research or I wanted any opportunity that they could give me. And that's how I got the NRF position, being an ambassador, which ends up getting me a trip to New York City at the end if I complete all of my requirements and, like, continue leading that club to meet employers and stuff like that. So that opportunity came to me because I was doing things and being active with my teacher. They are the people, they're your life support that's going to guide you all the way through. You need their help. Be able to draw a croquis. This should be self-explanatory, but you'd be surprised by the people who couldn't draw croquis, which this is not to be rude in any way, obviously, but I think it, for a fashion design student, knowing how to draw, at least knowing what the human figure looks like, you don't have to be an incredible artist, but you do have to know how to space out pr a proportionate human being. So look up that nine heads figure like this and just be able to draw one for yourself. Um, it can have a little style to it if you want. I have a lot of style in mine. Um, but just be able to know how to draw one. Obviously it's going to get better once you get there and are working on it more. But know how to draw one. This one can be the most frustrating thing about being in fashion. Talent doesn't equal opportunity and hard work doesn't necessarily equal opportunity. Talent plus hard work equals more opportunity but it's not a guarantee. In fashion you have to do all of it. You have to be putting yourself out there. You have to be open to opportunities. You have to be working hard in your classes but then again you also have to be practicing every day and have some sort of talent. You do need to have something. There needs to be something there that you're working towards and working hard at because unlike other majors I'm not hating on STEM majors. I love STEM. Big STEM fan but this is just an example. I'm a chemistry major, president of the chem club and top of my class. That equals them a spot at a nice company or working in a firm or working wherever chemists work. It's something that is going to equal them in because that's just how it works. For fashion it's not like that. You could be the top of your fashion class but you need to have that talent and creativity piece and you need to be what the brand's looking for. The hard work has to be there. You have to have other things. A ton of other people are fighting with the same things that you have. You have to make yourself stand out. You have to push any opportunity. It's not an easy road, but if you work hard and you have some creativity, some spark in you, you have a better chance of getting the things that you want. That's actually it for today's video. I know this video sounded very harsh, and I'm sorry about that. I did not mean to like fear the fashion into you and think that, oh my gosh, this is going to be scary and hard, because it's not. I mean, it is going to be hard. It's not scary. It's a lot of fun. You have to work for it, but you're working at something fun that you like. People in fashion are passionate about fashion. You're surrounded by other passionate people, which for me, I did not have that really in high school. I love fashion design. I love the work that's involved with it. I love the competitiveness, and I'm just so passionate about it. And so if all those things align with you, you'll love it as well. Um, good luck. It's going to be such a fun journey. Um, with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you are so excited to start fashion school or if you already started. Um, I hope you're enjoying it. People coming in the fall. Good luck. Let me know if you have any comments, any questions. Leave them in the comments down below. Answer them as fast as I can or if you want a really quick response, DM me on Instagram and we can work that out. But with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe down below if you haven't this video. Big thumbs up if it helped you in any way. It really helps me. And I'll see you guys in my next video.